The Tibetan Plateau Tibetan, Wiley, Badsa Mtho, also known in China as the Qinghai Tibet Plateau or the Qingzhang Plateau Chinese, Qingkang Gao Yuan Pinyin, Qingzhang Gao Yuan or Himalayan Plateau, is a vast elevated plateau in Central Asia and East Asia, covering most of the Tibet Autonomous Region and Qinghai in Western China, as well as part of Ladakh in Jammu and Kashmir, India. It stretches approximately 1000 kilometers 620 miles north to south and 2500 kilometers 1600 miles east to west with an average elevation exceeding 4500 meters 14800 feet the tibetan plateau is sometimes called the roof of the world because it stands over 3 miles 4.8 kilometers above sea level and is surrounded by imposing mountain ranges that harbor the world S2 highest summits, Mount Everest and K2, and is the world's highest and largest plateau, with an area of 2,500,000 square kilometers (970,000 square miles), about five times the size of metropolitan France. Sometimes termed the third pole, the Tibetan plateau contains the headwaters of the drainage basins of most of the streams in surrounding regions. Its tens of thousands of glaciers and other geographical and ecological features serve as a water tower, storing water and maintaining flow. The impact of global warming on the Tibetan Plateau is of intense scientific interest. Description The Tibetan Plateau is surrounded by massive mountain ranges. The plateau is bordered to the south by the Inner Himalayan Range, to the north by the Kunlun Mountains, which separate it from the Tarim Basin, and to the northeast by the Kilian Mountains, which separate the plateau from the Hexi Corridor and Gobi Desert. To the east and southeast the plateau gives way to the forested gorge and ridge geography of the mountainous headwaters of the Salween, Mekong, and Yangtze rivers in northwest Yunnan and western Sichuan the Hengduan Mountains. In the west the curve of the rugged Karakoram range of northern Kashmir embraces the plateau. The Indus River originates in the western Tibetan Plateau in the vicinity of Lake Manasarovar. The Tibetan Plateau is bounded in the north by a broad escarpment where the altitude drops from around 5,000 meters feet to 1,500 meters feet over a horizontal distance of less than 150 kilometers 93 miles. Along the escarpment is a range of mountains. In the west the Kunlun Mountains separate the plateau from the Tarim Basin. About halfway across the Tarim the bounding range becomes the Alton Ta and the Kunluns, by convention, continue somewhat to the south. In the V, formed by this split is the western part of the Kaidam Basin. The Alton Ta ends near the Dangjin Pass on the Dunhuang Golmid Road. To the west are short ranges called the Danj, Yema, Shul, and Tulai Nanshans. The easternmost range is the Kilian Mountains. The line of mountains continues east of the plateau as the Kinling, which separates the Ordos Plateau from Sichuan. North of the mountains runs the Gansu or Hexi Corridor which was the main Silk Road route from China proper to the west. The plateau is a high-altitude arid steppe interspersed with mountain ranges and large brackish lakes. Annual precipitation ranges from 100 to 300 mm (3.9 to 11.8 in) and falls mainly as hail. The southern and eastern edges of the steppe have grasslands which can sustainably support populations of nomadic herdsmen, although frost occurs for 6 months of the year. Permafrost occurs over extensive parts of the plateau. Proceeding to the north and northwest, the plateau becomes progressively higher, colder and drier, until reaching the remote Changtang region in the northwestern part of the plateau. Here the average altitude exceeds 5,000 meters feet and winter temperatures can drop to minus 40 degrees Celsius minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. As a result of this extremely inhospitable environment, the Changdang region together with the adjoining Kakexili region is the least populous region in Asia, and the third least populous area in the world after Antarctica and northern Greenland. <laughs> Geology and geological history The geological history of the Tibetan Plateau is closely related to that of the Himalayas. The Himalayas are among the youngest mountain ranges on the planet and consist mostly of uplifted sedimentary and metamorphic rock. Their formation is a result of a continental collision or orogeny along the convergent boundary between the Indo-Australian Plate and the Eurasian Plate. 
The collision began in the Upper Cretaceous period about 70 million years ago, when the north moving Indo Australian plate, moving at about 15 cm per year, collided with the Eurasian plate. About 50 million years ago, this fast moving Indo Australian plate had completely closed the Tethys Ocean, the existence of which has been determined by sedimentary rocks settled on the ocean floor, and the volcanoes that fringed its edges. Since these sediments were light, they crumpled into mountain ranges rather than sinking to the floor. The Indo-Australian plate continues to be driven horizontally below the Tibetan plateau, which forces the plateau to move upwards. The plateau is still rising at a rate of approximately 5 mm (0.2 in) per year. Much of the Tibetan plateau is of relatively low relief. The cause of this is debated among geologists. Some argue that the Tibetan Plateau is an uplifted peneplain formed at low altitude, while others argue that the low relief stems from erosion and infill of topographic depressions that occurred at already high elevations. <inaudible> <inaudible> environment The Tibetan Plateau supports a variety of ecosystems, most of them classified as montane grasslands. While parts of the plateau feature an alpine tundra-like environment, other areas feature monsoon-influenced shrublands and forests. Species diversity is generally reduced on the plateau due to the elevation of low precipitation. The Tibetan plateau hosts species of gray wolf, snow leopard, wild yak, wild donkey, cranes, vultures, hawks, geese, snakes, and water buffalo. One notable animal is the high-altitude jumping spider, that can live at elevations of over 6,500 meters feet. Ecoregions found on the Tibetan Plateau, as defined by the World Wide Fund for Nature, are as follows The Pamir Alpine Desert and Tundra covers the western end of the Tibetan Plateau where it transitions to the Pamir Mountains. The North Tibetan Plateau Kunlun Mountains Alpine Desert covers the northwestern limits of the Tibetan Plateau along the Kunlun Mountains. The Karakoram West Tibetan Plateau Alpine Steppe covers the westernmost parts of the Tibetan Plateau and Ladakh. The northwestern Himalayan Alpine Shrub and Meadows on the Edges Mountains bordering the extreme west of the Tibetan Plateau. The Central Tibetan Plateau Alpine Steppe covers most of the central portions of the Tibetan Plateau and the eastern Changtang. The western Himalayan alpine shrub and meadows covers the southwestern plateau in the Garuda Valley region. The Kaidam Basin semi-desert located in the Kaidam Basin on the northern Tibetan plateau. The Kilian Mountains subalpine meadows covering the Kilian Mountains in the northernmost portions of the plateau. The Kilian Mountains conifer forests covering parts of the mountain ranges in the northeastern Tibetan plateau. The Tibetan Plateau Alpine Shrub and Meadows covering a swath of the central and northeastern Tibetan Plateau. The Yarlung Sangpo Arid Steppe in the Yarlung Sangpo River Valley, where most of the permanent human population on the Tibetan Plateau lives. The Eastern Himalayan Alpine Shrub and Meadows cover the southern Tibetan Plateau on the north side of the Himalayas. The Southeast Tibet Shrub and Meadows cover the southeastern and eastern parts of the plateau and are generally rainier than the other high-altitude Tibetan Plateau regions. The Northeastern Himalayan subalpine conifer forests reach up mountain valleys in the southern plateau and contain some of the highest altitude forests in the world. The Nujang Langkang Gorge Alpine Conifer and Mixed Forests cover the mountain valleys that reach 500 km miles into the southeastern Tibetan Plateau. The Hangduan Mountain subalpine conifer forests cover the southeasternmost mountain valleys on the plateau. The Chonglai Minchin conifer forests cover the eastern edges of the plateau and are the densest forests to be found anywhere on the Tibetan Plateau. Topic: <laughs> Human history. Topic: Nomads on the Tibetan Plateau and in the Himalayas are the remainders of nomadic practices historically once widespread in Asia and Africa. Pastoral nomads constitute about 40% of the ethnic Tibetan population. The presence of nomadic peoples on the plateau is predicated on their adaptation to survival on the world's grassland by raising livestock rather than crops, which are unsuitable to the terrain. Archaeological evidence suggests that the colonization leading to the full-time occupation of the plateau occurred much later than the previously thought 30,000 years ago. Since colonization of the Tibetan Plateau, Tibetan culture has adapted and flourished in the western, southern, and eastern regions of the plateau. 
The northern portion, the Changtang, is generally too high and cold to support permanent population. One of the most notable civilizations to have developed on the Tibetan Plateau is the Tibetan Empire from the 7th century to the 9th century AD. Topic: <laughs> Impact on other regions. Topic: <laughs> Topic: <laughs> Role in monsoons. Topic: Monsoons are caused by the different amplitudes of surface temperature seasonal cycles between land and oceans. This differential warming happens because heating rates differ between land and water. Ocean heating is distributed vertically through a mixed layer that may be 50 meters deep through the action of wind and buoyancy generated turbulence, whereas the land surface conducts heat slowly, with the seasonal signal penetrating only a meter or so. Additionally, the specific heat capacity of liquid water is significantly greater than that of most materials that make up land. Together, these factors mean that the heat capacity of the layer participating in the seasonal cycle is much larger over the oceans than over land, with the consequence that the land warms and cools faster than the ocean. In turn, air over the land warms faster and reaches a higher temperature than does air over the ocean. The warmer air over land tends to rise, creating an area of low pressure. The pressure anomaly then causes a steady wind to blow toward the land, which brings the moist air over the ocean surface with it. Rainfall is then increased by the presence of the moist ocean air. The rainfall is stimulated by a variety of mechanisms, such as low-level air being lifted upwards by mountains, surface heating, convergence at the surface, divergence aloft, or from storm-produced outflows near the surface. When such lifting occurs, the air cools due expansion in lower pressure, which in turn produces condensation and precipitation. In winter, the land cools off quickly, but the ocean maintains the heat longer. The hot air over the ocean rises, creating a low-pressure area and a breeze from land to ocean while a large area of drying high pressure is formed over the land, increased by wintertime cooling. Monsoons are similar to sea and land breezes, a term usually referring to the localized, diurnal cycle of circulation near coastlines everywhere, but they are much larger in scale, stronger and seasonal. The seasonal monsoon wind shift and weather associated with the heating and cooling of the Tibetan Plateau is the strongest such monsoon on Earth. <laughs> Glaciology, the Ice Age and at present Topic. Today, Tibet is an important heating surface of the atmosphere. However, during the last glacial maximum, an approximately 2,400,000 square kilometers (930,000 square miles) ice sheet covered the plateau. Due to its great extent, this glaciation in the subtropics was an important element of radiative forcing. With a much lower latitude, the ice in Tibet reflected at least four times more radiation energy per unit area into space than ice at higher latitudes. Thus, while the modern plateau heats the overlying atmosphere, during the last ice age it helped to cool it, this cooling had multiple effects on regional climate. Without the thermal low pressure caused by the heating, there was no monsoon over the Indian subcontinent. This lack of monsoon caused extensive rainfall over the Sahara, expansion of the Thar Desert, more dust deposited into the Arabian Sea, and a lowering of the biotic life zones on the Indian subcontinent. Animals responded to this shift in climate, with the Javan Rusa migrating into India. In addition, the glaciers in Tibet created meltwater lakes in the Khitam Basin, the Tarim Basin, and the Gobi Desert, despite the strong evaporation caused by the low latitude. Silt and clay from the glaciers accumulated in these lakes. When the lakes dried at the end of the Ice Age, the silt and clay were blown by the downslope wind off the plateau. These airborne fine grains produced the enormous amount of loess in the Chinese lowlands. Topic: <laughs> Effect of climate change. Topic: The Tibetan Plateau contains the world's third largest store of ice. Qin Dahe, the former head of the China Meteorological Administration, issued the following assessment in 2009. Temperatures are rising four times faster than elsewhere in China, and the Tibetan glaciers are retreating at a higher speed than in any other part of the world. In the short term, this will cause lakes to expand and bring floods and mudflows. In the long run, the glaciers are vital lifelines for Asian rivers, including the Indus and the Ganges. 
once they vanish, water supplies in those regions will be in peril. See also Topic Geography of Tibet Tibet Tibetan people Tibetan culture Tibet 1912 to 1951 Incorporation of Tibet into the People's Republic of China Tibetan sovereignty debate Central Tibetan administration Tibetan diaspora Topic References Topic Topic Citations Topic Topic Sources Topic Topic External Links Topic On Thinner Ice Ru Lu Bao Bing by Grip, Asia Society and Media Storm. The Third Pole, Understanding Asia's Water Crisis. The End of Earth's Summer. Long Rivers and Distant Sources. Roof of the Earth offers clues about how our planet was shaped. Plateau Perspectives International NGO. Leaf Morphology and the Timing of the Rise of the Tibetan Plateau. Weather in the Eastern Chongtang at the Wayback Machine, archived the 19th of March 2006. Protected areas of the Tibetan Plateau region. North Tibetan Plateau Kunlun Mountains Alpine Desert. Terrestrial ecoregions. World Wildlife Fund. Photos of Tibetan nomads. Roof of the Earth. Offers clues about how our planet was shaped. Contemporary Lifestyle and Language Learning Center from Tibet Lhasa, the official language of Tibetan, podcast.